All right, Sagar, what are you looking at? Well, one of the core missions of this show is to explore the basic question of how do we get here? Mm -hmm. How do you get to a place millions of Americans cannot stand the sight of one another over political views? People literally get into fistfights over what type of hat the other is wearing and where it's considered somehow socially acceptable to get into prolonged debates on your cousin's Facebook page for sharing an opinion about something. There are a lot of reasons for why, but if I were to choose the biggest villain, it would be the media, especially in the years where Donald Trump was president, where the media not only refused to depart from its mission of making people hate each other for more dollars, but worse, it actually threw out any pretense of journalistic integrity that they had in order to fulfill their sole mission of defeating Trump. Throwing out that integrity had far-reaching consequences because it turns out we actually do need a mass media, which is in some way concerned or tethered to the truth. You wanna know why most people won't get vaccinated? Because they don't trust institutions and they especially don't trust the media when they're telling them what's going on. Why do people believe so many conspiracy theories? Well, number one, many of them are actually true. Number two, because these so-called debunkers and purveyors of truth are full of it. If I were to crystallize a single episode of the Trump presidency that showed how morally repugnant and bankrupt these people are, it would be the 2017-2018 period where Michael Avenatti was present on our political scene. <laughs> you might remember Avenatti as the lawyer of Stormy Daniels, a smarmy, bald, fast and hard talking guy who was all over cable news. It was obvious to anyone with a brain cell, this dude was trouble, obviously a liar. And yet, because he might, quote unquote, have the goods on Trump, everything was forgiven. Here's just a little taste of how much mass media slobbered all over him at the time. Take a listen. He's Donald Trump's worst nightmare. Michael <laughs> Avenatti. Joining us once again is Michael Avenatti. Let's bring in Michael Avenatti. Michael Avenatti. Michael Avenatti. Michael Avenatti, thank you very much. He's out there saving the <laughs> Look, country. It, it, Don Meacham says he may be the savior of the republic. You are something of a folk hero now. I owe Michael Avenatti an apology. I've been saying enough already, Michael. I've seen you everywhere. What do you have left to say? I was wrong, brother. You have a lot to say. I uh, am just dying to hear what you think. These people all like you. I'm the only person right here Donald Trump fears more than Robert Miller. We think you guys are the tip of the spear that's going to take down Donald Trump. Right. Michael Avenatti's a beast. Okay, that's true. And he, he's a beast. He's a beast. I hand it to yeah. her and I hand it to Michael Avenatti. But he has a great, bigger calling here. That being a lawyer is minimal compared to what he's doing. No one has talked tougher directly to Donald Trump on TV than Michael Avenatti. And Donald Trump is afraid to mention his name. That's fascinating. God, I feel ill. You remember all that? It was while everyone thought that Avenatti's representation of Daniels would somehow miraculously lead to his removal from office because of a violation of campaign finance law. Now, it really does seem hilarious in retrospect, but the fever pitch in Washington was so high, everybody snorted what this guy was selling. <laughs> and like what usually happens in that scenario, the fall from grace was rapid. Avenatti, it turned out, was a massive sack of fill in the blank. He stole $300,000 from the very client who he represented that he thought was going to take down Trump. He arrested was arrested for a clownish extortion scheme over Nike with a client where he said that he would leverage his media stardom to lob false accusations against the company and erase billions of dollars off of their stock price. My personal favorite, he was indicted for allegedly stealing $4 million in settlement money for a client of his who was a paraplegic. You can look up the word human garbage in the dictionary. That picture would be very fitting with his right next to it. And it was so obvious from the beginning that this person was a sleazebag. He was peddling multiple false accusations, like that of Julie Swetnick against Brett Kavanaugh. And yet, they built him up into a godlike figure, not just in the clips I showed you. Brian Stelter literally said Avenatti was a serious contender for the 2020 mm. presidential race. Mm. Chris Saliza, right here on the screen, <laughs> wrote, quote, President Michael Avenatti, uh. never say never. <laughs> Stephanie Rule of MSNBC repeatedly said on her program to Avenatti's face, the Democrats should learn something from you, Michael. For nearly a year, Avenatti was given probably a billion dollars worth of free advertising across this country while he extorted his clients and lied to the public, all because he made Trump look bad. Even today, if you were to ask many of the suburban liberal wine moms what they think about Michael Avenatti, I bet you they would still have a favorable opinion of him. 
Why? Because MSNBC, they just disappeared him into the ether. After over 100 cable news interviews on their air, MSNBC dedicated all but two minutes to the sentencing of the man who they once hailed as the savior of the republic. Mm. Avenatti was reduced to tears, crying, begging the court to show mercy on him after extorting millions of dollars from clients and being caught for the fraud that he was. So what can we learn? This isn't about Avenatti per se. It's about the perfect example of how during the Trump years, no matter how sleazy, no matter how transparently revolting, smarmy that you were, if you had a 1% chance of being detrimental to Trump, the media would give you everything. And by doing that, they sacrificed any remaining credibility they had with tens of millions of Americans. And now that they've lost our trust, they question, why do so many people not trust us? Those who don't, oh, they're the extremists. They should be surveilled. Let me posit this. Maybe they're the extremists and we're the normal ones. It's amazing, Crystal, to go and you read. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.